Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Tuesday morning mountain weather update. Let's go to where it's snowing. Let's go to uh, Snowbird first up there in the Wasatch front of Utah, seeing some off and on light snow up there. Snowbird, Alta, Brighton, Solitude, and that's going to be the case most of this morning. Um, let me take you to where it's snowing a little bit harder. So this is up in Jackson Hole and now finally seeing snow all the way down to the valley floor with this. I told you it was going to be a colder front and it is. This has got a lot of cold air with it. You can see snow at the uh, the main lifts at the bottom and of course at the top. Uh, over in Grand Targhee, it's been a it's been a great 24 hours up there. I mean, uh, quite a bit of snow accumulation. It's a white out up there near the top. Look at the bottom. Look how beautiful it is. This is with some with some residual snow coming down up there at Grand Targhee. It looks like they got at least three, four, five, six inches of snow up there um, so far out of this. Now here is radar. Um, you can see all the sort of the rotation uh, behind this cold front, and that's what it is. It's plowing through Wyoming, Utah, and now moving into Colorado. So today the the snow will begin to develop across Colorado, and then it will intensify tonight into tomorrow across Colorado. In fact, here's that view up in Wyoming. You can see the flow coming down uh, with that, uh, that cold front, just like some plumes of snow over the Tetons, the Wind Rivers, and a little bit of that blue snow, blue showing up over the top of Salt Lake in the Wasatch. So there you go, there's the snow. Let me give you the, the lay of the land here on the, the water vapor satellite imagery. So your moisture loft, which is the key here, that's gonna be your whites and your blues. And you can really see the cold front right here. Um, and, and so what it's going to do is it's going to move into Colorado and then eventually New Mexico over the next uh, couple of days, two or three days. There's also another area of low pressure behind it with a cold front. That will also be a player in the extended forecast. Here are my bullet points this morning. So we've got cold front today, 11.5, and it continues in uh, to 11.6, and then it turns into this cutoff area of low pressure over the four corners, and it strengthens, and it sits for like two or three days, and it comes back over the top of New Mexico and Colorado with a second round of snow from many of the same locations. Looking down the road, there's still another cold front on the horizon for 11.11 and 11.12. Here are the key dates for uh, snowfall. If you want to check those out for the Wasatch, the Tetons, Colorado, and unfortunately, I don't have anything for Tahoe, but for example, so this cold front comes out of Wyoming and Utah today and into Colorado. So I have snow increasing in Colorado this afternoon, tonight, through tomorrow with moderate to heavy, that's with the M and H, moderate to heavy accumulations. Another shot of some moderate to heavy snow, 11, 8, 11, 9, as the low comes back to the north through Colorado out of New Mexico. And then that third, that cold front comes in around 11, 12 with some light snow accumulations. So that's how you would read that. Uh, let's go to a couple time height forecasts here. Humidity in the atmosphere, next 72 to 80 hours. This is for Tahoe Ski Area down in northern New Mexico. So notice in the timelines at the bottom, this is a slice of the atmosphere vertically. The timeline, you read it from right to left at the bottom. Notice the green, which is higher humidity, increases um, by the time we get into this afternoon tonight, and it stays pretty deep with high humidity for the next 72 plus hours, because once the front comes in, it basically stalls, the area of low pressure develops, and it keeps the moisture coming. So once we're in it in Taos, northern New Mexico, southern Colorado, we're in it for at least a few days. Here's the view a little bit further north on the time height for Copper Mountain that just got blasted with like 16 to 22 inches. It was an incredible flow, a localized perfect flow pattern for like Summit County, uh, Breck and copper. Well, here's what lies ahead. So the moisture slowly increases in copper this afternoon, and it's and it really increases tonight, and it goes high tomorrow as well. Certainly for the first half of the day. So that's where we're going to see some of the best snow production for copper. That whole I-70 corridor veil pass would be this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow morning. Then the moisture content sort of fades. You can see that over the next 72 hours, and then it would probably re-increase after about 11, 7, 11, 8, and 11, 9. And it's gonna be much colder. You saw that snow up there in Jackson Hole at the valley floor. That's gonna be the case almost everywhere with enough cold air to generate um, snow down to the valley floors. For example, Berthoud Pass in Colorado, which is high, it's up there above tree line in Colorado, but you get an idea of just how much colder it's gonna be. Look at the high temps uh, today around Berthoud Pass, about 20, low of 10. Tomorrow, 
it's, it's even colder. A high of only 10 and a low of 5, and then 7 below into Thursday morning and a high of 26. So this cold front definitely brings some cold air. And you can see the potential around 11, 12, and 11, 13 for the next cold front that drops temperatures into the single digits. So just to give you an idea of how, how cold these cold fronts really are. All right, here is the forecast radar and satellite. By 5.30 this afternoon, Snow, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and building into Colorado. And by the time we get into tomorrow morning, it's mostly in Colorado, northern New Mexico. And this would be snow all the way down to Denver at 5280. Like, the, like I said, the valley floors, the front range, will likely see one to maybe four inches of snow accumulation for the Denver metro area, more if you're above 6,000 feet. So west and south of Denver, more accumulation. Um, certainly, some of the biggest numbers are going to be down in southern Colorado and northern New Mexico. And the snow kind of sinks to the south. Here comes the low building out of the four corners, and then it begins to run north. But you, you'll notice a lot of the snow continues over many of the same areas for like two or three days. This is Saturday in the morning. Snow comes back into Denver and across the Front Range one last time with the rotation around that area of low pressure, and then it's out. Here comes the final cold front of the series around 11-11. Here it comes from uh, the northern tier. It drops down into Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. And then by 11-13, 11-14, drier air moves in, and it's largely over. Okay, how much snow? Well, here are my latest numbers. So all of today through tomorrow. Another two or three for the, the Wasatch, potentially a two to four up there for the Tetons on top of what you've already got. Potentially four to eight for Big Sky up there um, in Bridger Bowl. Down into Colorado, remember a lot of that happens this afternoon, tonight, and tomorrow. Uh, potentially four to eight inches up on the Continental Divide, Loveland, A Basin, Winter Park, Keystone, down into Summit County and over Vail Pass. Potentially six, seven, eight inches for the Elks around Aspen, Snowmass, Buttermilk, and the Highlands. And potentially eight to 12 for the San Juans, maybe even more down in the San Grays. And potentially six to 12 down there for Taos, Ski Santa Fe, and also Angel Fire. Next time period. This accounts for the area of low pressure that comes up and also that final front. So this is 11.7 through 11.14. And look at those numbers. Another 6 to 8 or 6 to 10 for the I-70 corridor, Summit County, and the Front Range High Peaks. And potentially a foot or more for the sand grays running down into southern Colorado, La Vida, Cuchara, and down into northern New Mexico through Taos and beyond. So that's the bullseye 11.7 to 11.14. And maybe a foot up there around the Tetons during this same time period. Could see 6 to 12 through parts of Montana, central to northern Idaho. Anywhere in pink purple is over a foot and looking good over parts of uh, BC. You can see the numbers up there. All right, guys, this is going to be an exciting time period. I appreciate you tuning in here this morning. Take care and have a great day.